For multiple myeloma, uh, stem cell transplantation using patients' own cells is one of the standard therapies. And when we do stem cell transplantation, uh, before we give stem cells, we wipe out patients' disease with high-dose chemotherapy. And the drug that is used most commonly for that is melphalan. And this has been in use for several decades now. And people have tried to improve upon that, but so far no other regimen is found to be superior. So there are some data that this combination of busulfan and melphalan may do better than melphalan. So with that background, we designed this phase three trial to compare melphalan with busulfan plus melphalan as a regimen for stem cell transplant for newly diagnosed myeloma patients. So. Okay. And when it came to the patient cohort for the people involved in this trial, can you tell us more about that? Sure. So all the patients had multiple myeloma and uh, they had to be eligible for stem cell transplant. Generally, they were uh, up to age 70, which is what uh, most of the transplant eligible patients are. And they had received what is called induction treatment, a few cycles of combination therapy before coming to transplant. And there were 204 patients uh, who were enrolled in this trial, and uh, 104 in the busulfan arm and 100 in the melphalan only arm. And as one would expect uh, in a trial like this, these patients were fairly well matched in terms of age and ethnicity and the type of disease that they had. Okay. And when it came to results, what did you find? Yeah, so uh, what we found was that uh, this combination drug, because it was more intense regimen, was associated with more side effects. So these patients had more mouth sores and they had uh, increase in their liver function tests and they also had more neutropenic fever, some of them requiring hospitalization. But all these side effects were reversible and patients fully recovered. Uh, there were no deaths related to either the two drug or the single drug regimen. Uh, and in terms of response to treatment at 100 days or at last follow-up, the response was pretty much the same. But what was more most interesting and encouraging was that the patients who were treated in the two drug arm had a longer time to progression. They stayed in remission longer and as a result the progression free survival was significantly longer in the two drug arm versus melphalan only. And that was particularly noticeable for patients who are considered to have high risk multiple myeloma that traditionally do worse than the standard risk patients. Uh, so this was the key finding that although we saw more side effects with two drug regimen, those were reversible, but most importantly we saw a longer progression free survival with the two drug regimen. You see the significance as being worth the cost in toxicity and drug availability then? So uh, the, at this point since the toxicity was reversible and progression free survival is still uh, especially in the high risk patients uh, is pretty dramatic. Uh, uh, our assessment is that yes it uh, is worth exploring further, perhaps in a large multi-center trial um, in a bigger uh, and more diverse patient population. And if these results are validated and confirmed, this may become the new standard for uh, chemotherapy for stem cell transplant for multiple myeloma. And you mentioned that the patients were fairly well matched. Were there any particular indicators for, for example, age or fragility for people who would be less suited to the combination? Uh, right. So for the age group that we use this for, we did not see any signal for increased toxicity. So all the patients who were eligible for the study did equally well.